What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't wanna miss them. Today I have a very special guest. She's gonna tell us all about the field of neonatology, why she went into it, and also some tips for everyone out there. Dr. E. Keke, welcome to the uh, channel and uh, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? Good, good. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself to the viewers out there and tell up who you are and kind of what, what you do. Okay, so I'm um, Paris KK. hi everyone. I am a neonatology fellow here in Pittsburgh. So um, I, I think a lot of people don't really know what neonatology is and they hear NICU, there's always some story about, oh yeah, my grandson was in the NICU and I don't really know what happened. Um, but yeah, our specialty really is in um, taking care of premature babies and critically ill babies. So surgical um, babies, maybe that need surgery, it was they're very small or born very early. Okay, and did you always know that you wanted to do this or was it something that just kind of fell in your lap in med school or as a resident? Yeah, what it kind of know? caught me by surprise, to be honest. I knew that I was gonna be an outpatient general pediatrician forever. So that, that was my goal going into med school. That was my goal um, in residency even. I was pretty sure I was gonna be an outpatient general pediatrician. I really love um, outpatient medicine in that, you know, you really get to connect with your families. Mm -hmm. And I love that I can kind of get to know a family. I can take care of them when they're a baby, when they're two years old, when they're 12 years old, and I kind of grow with the family. That was like the most satisfying part of, of medicine and pediatrics and feeling like, you know, you're kind of growing with the child. Mm -hmm. um, but in residency, I actually started to have feelings where I was kind of like, oh, this is a little slow for me. Mm -hmm. um, I love talking to the families, but like, I really want a little bit more variety. Um, and I did my NICU rotation and I loved it. And it was just like, n no day was the same. Every day was different. There's a lot of excitement. There were procedures, but then also I got that continuity that I really wanted um, out of medicine. So, you know, there were a lot of babies that were there for weeks, for months. Um, I got to go to their deliveries and then kind of see them get discharged and um, that kind of like brought both of the worlds together. So a little bit of the, the excitement and the procedural skills as well as like continuity. Awesome. And can you tell the viewers out there, what is the education that's required? I know four years of med school and then is it three years of pediatrics and how many years of fellowship? Yeah, so three years of pediatric residency and then three years of, of neonatology fellowship. So wow. I'm a third year fellowship. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, what are some other fellowships that people can apply to after you do a pediatric residency? What are some other options? So, um, you know, neonatology is relatively broad. So it's basically a kind of critical care um, for, for neonates. Um, but you can specialize in a specific system of the body. So you can say, I wanna be a pediatric cardiologist and focus on pediatric heart disease or pediatric gastroenterology is for on like GI disease and an intestinal disease. Um, infectious disease is another category. Um, pulmonology, so lung disease, neurology, focusing on brain, um, brain disorders, and um, there's different kind of subspecialties that branch off of those um, big categories, but um, there really is kind of, you can specialize in one part of the body or the whole body as uh, in general. Okay, and as a fellow, I know it probably depends on what rotation you're on, but what is, what is like a typical day for you? It starts at what time and ends at what time? Um, so yeah, that does depend a little bit on based on which hospital I'm in. If I'm at the surgical hospital, um, we don't do deliveries there usually. Um, so it really are babies that are born somewhere else that need advanced care. So they need to be evaluated by a neurosurgeon or need to be evaluated by um, a general surgeon um, for some reason. Um, and so at that hospital, we come in at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. I um, check in with my team from overnight and kind of debrief on what happened, events that happened overnight. Um, I do do um, surgical rounds with the pediatric surgery fellows. We go around and we kind of talk about the surgical plans for the baby, babies. Are they okay with um, starting some feeds for the babies or they think the baby needs to go back to the OR? And that's just because the surgeons generally start their day pretty early. So if we catch them early in the morning, we're able to kind of move forward on some of those plans um, and while they're in the OR doing other cases. Um, and our, our babies are, are able to kind of move forward with that. Okay. Um, 
And then we do medical rounds, which is, I think, is typical for most specialties. They do medical rounds. Around 8 a.m., we start medical rounds where we do family-centered rounds with the families. They come out. We talk about the plan for the day. Um, and then um, the afternoon is really kind of variable. We do um, transports. We do neonatal transports um, during my fellowship. So um, we get transport calls throughout the day from community pediatricians, other smaller NICUs that need help um, and want to transfer babies to a higher level of care. So we personally as the fellows take those calls and then occasionally if a baby is very sick and they need a doctor to go, then we will actually go on flights or go on ambulance transports to go get the baby and bring the baby back to our hospital. And that really is kind of the most of the afternoon is kind of tidying up the plans and getting admissions and settling babies. And then our day usually ends around 6 p.m. at that hospital. Um, and at that hospital, we actually don't do overnight call because um, there's an, a pretty robust nurse, nurse practitioner group that covers overnight. Um, but we do call at our other hospital, which is our delivery hospital. And that day is very different than um, the other NICU. So we start usually at 7.30 a.m and um, again, get sign out on our patients, hear about the events that happened overnight. Um, we will go do medical rounds with the, pa with the families and um, talk about the patient plans. And then the variability in that day is really centered around deliveries. So deliveries can happen obviously at any time of day. Um, they can happen morning, noon, or night. And so we are going back and forth to high-risk deliveries, all the preterm deliveries, we attend all twin deliveries, um, and we kind of provide additional support for um, the pediatricians throughout the day. So the pediatricians usually round in the newborn nursery during the day, and then they're not in the hospital overnight. So we will often take care of a lot of the acute issues that happen with the babies upstairs overnight. Okay. Um, and so that is a full call shift that we do every four or five days, and that is about 28 hours. So we'll come in at 7.30 a.m. one day, and leave after rounds the next day around 11. Wow, so that's like surgery hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's exhausting sometimes. It's like nonstop. But, yeah. yeah. But, you know, as a neonatologist, uh, what is the smallest baby that you have taken care of? The smallest baby that we've had in our unit since I've been in fellowship has been 347 grams. Wow. And yes. what does that equate to in pounds? Um, it's like that. about a pound. Oh, wow. That's very Yeah. Sad. Yeah. And are you doing a lot of procedures during their day, um, like intubation or any central lines or what, what kind of procedures are you doing? Yeah, we do a lot of procedures. Um, that's actually one of the things that I like kind of drew me to neonatology. So um, in the delivery room and then in our unit, we do a ton of intubation. So putting in breathing tubes in small baby airways when they are having trouble breathing. Um, we do chest tubes as well. We do central lines. Our central lines are not um, probably what everyone else has yeah. traditionally thought of, of kind of a big catheter hanging out of your neck. Um, we do umbilical catheters, which um, is a unique way that we're able to give um, higher content of, of fluid and pressors and things like that through a central line. And it goes through the blood vessels and the umbilical cord, which mm -hmm. is a unique feature of taking care of babies. Yeah, so these tubes are like extremely small. I would imagine probably smaller than a pencil or probably smaller than that, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of them are like kind of like straw diameter, yeah. And do you find it difficult to see infants and little kids and conditions like this? Because, you know, only special people that, that can actually do, you know, your job, I would imagine. Do you find it difficult at times? It is. It's diff it, it really is difficult. I mean, as much as like the good times are like so fun to, to see people get discharged and kind of uh, grow and graduate from the NICU, you know, we do have some babies that just don't make it. Um, and so it, it's hard. It's a hard, a hard thing to deal with on a day to day basis. I think um, it does take a special kind of person. And I think it's kind of gravitated to that field, similar to people who are gravitated towards uh, oncology and um, you know, the pediatric ICU and things like that. Um, some people just kind of have that that knack for it. And I, I feel like I, I'm pretty, I've gotten a lot more comfortable throughout fellowship with having those kind of discussions um, and kind of helping people go through that grieving process. So. Okay, and what do you enjoy most about neonatology? I love the variety. I mean, really, it's, like I said, every day is going to be different. There's 
different things kind of going to work on different babies. Um, and, um, you know, they always keep me on my toes, <laughs> you know, and he, the biggest baby can be the sickest, the smallest baby can be the strongest baby in the unit. I mean, it really just, you never really know. And I think that is just kind of exhilarating to see, you know, these babies kind of as so small as they are kind of come into their own personality. Um, that's like really fun to see. Okay. And you're kind of at the completion of your training. Will the lifestyle be similar to when you're intending the hours, the 28 hours and the every three or four days? Is that how the lifestyle is? Um, it is similar. It's a little less frequent, but it kind of depends on what unit you go to. So, um, unfortunately, all of our, our, most of the programs around the country are in-house call for attending physicians. So, um, you know, Several years ago, probably 10, 15 years ago, there were several units that would have the attending stay home and the fellows would be in-house mm -hmm. and we could call if we needed some extra backup. Um, but the way that things have moved with medicine now, everyone is in-house just so people can get there quickly back and forth um, and get the appropriate supervision. So um, I will have to be in-house call a um, couple times Mm -hmm. a month uh, to a couple times a week kind of depending on um how big our practice is the practice here um in pittsburgh has a lot of a lot of physicians so they don't have to be on call as much but you can imagine if you are at a smaller unit where there's only two or three neonatologists on staff you're on call every third day or or you're doing a week at a time and and being on call for a whole week and then having two weeks off yeah and I know it varies by location and contract type and academic versus private, but how much, like an average, can a neonatologist make for a living? Um, yeah, it does vary. I think um, starting salary for kind of general for academics would be in the like two twenty range, two hundred twenty thousand range. Um, private practice, you can get a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, so you could probably start out at like three to mid threes um, mm -hmm. as far as three hundred. 350,000 um, for starting salary, yeah. And that does also kind of depend on like if you're doing research or you're doing other things or you're 100% clinical. Okay. Um, for the people out there that may be interested in becoming a pediatrician or a neonatologist, what type of advice would you have for them? I would say keep your mind open. Um, I definitely wouldn't have thought I would be doing neonatology. It's, I didn't even really know what neonatology was when I started med school. And so um, I was very open. And although I thought I went through pediatrics, I went through all my medical school, um, I mean, my medical school um, third year rotations, very open-minded. And I actually toyed with the idea of OB, which kind of ties into what I'm doing now, because I think I enjoyed being in the delivery room. So keep an open mind and as early as you can to get some shadowing experience, because I think the more you see and the more you see the nuances of being a physician in a, in a particular field, it's not just about, you know, I'm, I like cute babies. Um, you know, the day to day of having those difficult conversations with families, the kind of tougher parts of the job, I think you should be aware of before you go into the field. Okay, awesome. And I asked this of all of my guests, um, three last questions. What is your favorite thing to do outside of medicine? Oh, goodness. You're putting me on the spot on that one. I don't know if I have like a favorite thing. Okay, well, realistically, um, I love doing wine tastings. Okay, awesome. What is, favorite, like, what is your favorite wine? Favorite wine, I would say, would be a Savion Blanc. Like huh. New Zealand, very dry um, Savion Blanc. Yeah. Got you. So and, that's like my pastime, realistically. <laughs> and do you have a favorite entree or a food item? Um, I love Chinese food. So mm -hmm. like honey chicken, sesame chicken, all those like really sticky sauces. I'm very much a sauce kind of girl. So if I get kind of a sticky, savory sauce, I'm, I'm golden. Gotcha. And the most favorite place that you visited recently? Um, let's see. Well, it wasn't that recent. Uh, well, we went to Aruba for our honeymoon like a couple months ago. That was beautiful. But actually, my most favorite place to visit, I went to Tanzania um, right. in residency about two years ago. And um, that was just like the trip of a lifetime. I spent a month there working in their hospital, but I also was able to climb Mount Kilimanjaro mm -hmm. and um, do a lot of like just once in a lifetime activity. So that was like probably my most favorite trip that I've ever taken so far. Sweet. 
Well, Dr. EKK, thank you so much for uh, joining me today. You're a real inspiration to a lot of people out here. I don't know, personally know any black neonatologist, so uh, you're the only person I know. <laughs> hey, you know, there's some kids out there that see this video and they see you and they like, man, I, I want to do that and I want to be like her. So hopefully uh, we have that, you know, type of response. So thank you so much. Yeah, feel free to reach out to me. I would love to talk more, talk further to anyone who's interested. So Absolutely. And what's a good way that people can get in touch with you? Um, you can contact me via email. My email is P as in Paul, S as in Sam Kingsbury. So K-I-N-G-S-B-E-R-R-Y at gmail.com. All right. And so I will put that in the description below. But thank you so All much right. again. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks so much. And everyone else, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.